Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday broadcast. We're in the midst of a righteous revolution. The Bible says if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? God didn't say what can the government do? What can the politicians do? He said, what can the righteous do? Well, our nation began a righteous revolution, but now is not the time to go back to sleep. Now is the time to move forward in our awakening and to continue this righteous revolution. That's today's broadcast. Well, before we get into the word for today, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, a powerful song, A Perfect Heart. All I could think to say was get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real-life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. 
To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. Psalm 11.3 says, When the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? The word foundations there is referring to the moral and political standards. When the foundations are destroyed, what will the righteous do? Notice he didn't say, what will the sinners do? What will the government do? He said, what will the righteous do? Now this morning in my time, I'm going to share with you something the Lord has really exploded on the inside of me. I want to talk about the righteous revolution. We are in the beginning of a righteous revolution. The righteous are bold as a lion. The righteousness exalts a nation. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Now, do you all have that thumb drive that I uh, sent back there? I, wa I want to show you what a righteous revolution in America looks like. Yeah. Hallelujah! <laughs> Is that a righteous revolution or not? 82% of evangelicals voted for Donald Trump. Now, whether that means anything to you or not, I was watching President-elect Trump just the other day on a talk show, and they asked him, they said, candidly, do you understand what's happening in America and how you got to be president? And he said very openly and honestly and humbly <laughs> as he could, he said, what's happening in America is not about me. He said, it's about the American people. And I know Brother Copeland knows this, but we probably need to pray for President Trump more than we've prayed for any president in our history. He has already, <laughs> he has already stirred up the entire country, the political. And the thing that I like best he stirred up the media. I like that. He's, he's told them to their face. They've been giving us fake news. And, I, you know, just being in television, it just gives me so much pleasure when he holds a press conference and tells the reporters, sit down and shut up. I like Merle Haggard's song. If you're running down our country, Hoss, you're on the fighting side of me. <laughs> Amen. So we've got a lot to look forward to. But it's the righteous revolution. It's the responsibility of the righteous now. So what I'm going to share with you today, we cannot afford to lose the momentum that God has given us. Now, Psalm 11.3, we've already read. Let me define foundations. Political and moral support. What are the righteous going to do? Why the righteous? Go over to Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. God always looks to the righteous. He always holds the righteous responsible. Genesis 18. I guess we could start at verse 17. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. They'll keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. That the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, 
I will go down now and see whether they've done altogether according to the cry of it which is coming to me, and if not, I will know. When it says he will go down now, it, it's referring to, he says, I'm going to go down in a judicial investigation. I'm going to go down and see. I'm going to go down and see for myself. I'm going to visit these people. But, but keep in mind and watch this. He's already got Abraham in mind. He's already got his righteous servant ready to deal with the situation. In verse 23, Abram drew near and said, Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will you also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous? That be far from you to do after this manner to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. So God's looking for the righteous to stand in the gap for the land. Now, God's already laid the foundation for us. I mean, we've got a, and, and, and I don't mean to sound political, but I use these words for lack of better description. We've got a, a, a politic body now that is uh, majority Republicans, which is the conservative um, political party. I've read both party platforms. The Democrat Party platform is, is uh, uh, pro-abortion, pro-homosexual agenda, pro-big government, big media, and anti-Israel. The Republican Party platform is pro-life, pro-family and marriage, anti-big government and media, and pro-Israel. Now, that's the one thing that is going to turn our blessing around where America is concerned. Is we now have a president and we now have senators and congressmen. We ha now have a Republican majority that is going to bless Israel, not curse Israel. Uh, we have a representative in Washington, D.C. I say we, I'm talking about CUFI, Christians United for Israel. Uh, Pastor John Hagee's organization, 3.3 million members now in just 10 years. And Gary Bauer, former Assistant Secretary of Education under the Reagan administration, is our representative in Washington, D.C. And Gary does a blog every afternoon, in, and I get it, and after Donald Trump was elected, he sent a copy of the response from Prime Minister Netanyahu the head of the Zionist movement and the mayor of Jerusalem. They were figuratively dancing in the streets. Absolutely thrilled. They know now that America is going to stand with Israel. And if we continue to stand with Israel and bless Israel, we're going to be blessed. Blessings from heaven in 2017. Everything that heaven has belongs to us because we are the righteous. Now I want to deal with what it means to be the righteous. What does righteousness mean? It means the ability to stand in the presence of God without guilt or shame. No guilt, no shame. No concept of our past life. No concept of failure, of lack. The ability to stand in the presence of God. Go to Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. One of the definitions of righteousness is equity of character. Now, I know this might uh, be uncomfortable for some of you. Equity of character. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, I know we're not God. But he said, let this mind, this mind 
thought, this mind understanding be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Whoa. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. If you paraphrase that out, Jesus did not think, take that word robbery, Jesus did not think that it took away from his deity to become humanity. He was all God. He was all man. He was the God man. And he said, let this same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Hmm. Romans chapter 5 verse 17 says that we have received the gift of righteousness. Romans 14, 17 says righteousness is the kingdom of God. We cannot function without having a proper biblical understanding of what it means to be righteous. We've literally been placed as sons. That includes sons and daughters. We've been placed in a position. Every time that we hear of threatening weather coming towards our house or our city or if we're flying somewhere, I always go outside and I begin to talk to the weather. Now, I used to just say, in the name of Jesus, blah, 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 blah. But the Lord impressed me a few months ago. He said, you need to establish your authority to do what you do. So I now go out and I will say, by the authority given to me by God, I take my place of authority and I command the storms to cease, to go up the wind to cease, the fog to lift. And every time I do that, I see results. You have the authority. Uh, Jeannie and I have ministered deliverance to so many people early years of the church, and <laughs> there, was this <laughs> there was this one lady, she came to our church. This is when we first started in the little shopping center, and she was a go-go dancer. And uh, for those of y'all that don't know what a go-go dancer is... Uh, <laughs> I haven't always been saved, have you? <laughs> it's back in the 70s when uh, girls used to dance in a cage in bars and hotels and whatever. And they, Anyway, so this girl was a go-go dancer and she got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and she wanted to go on with God. She came to our church, but she was, you know, had all kinds of demons and stuff. And so we're going to minister deliverance to her. <laughs> And I commended that spirit to come out of her. And all of a sudden her eyes opened up. She looked at me and a voice spoke out of her and said, I know you. You're that happy fella. <laughs> well, that's both comforting and alarming. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad those demons knew who I was. But I had to exercise my authority over those demon spirits. They know who you are. They, you know, they said, Jesus, we know, and Paul, we know. But who are you boys? They didn't, they didn't know their authority. So the ability to stand in the presence of God without guilt or shame. Now, this is not arrogance. This is not pride. Uh, go over to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. I just want to establish something here where righteousness is concerned because we are in a righteous revolution and we cannot lose our momentum. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. Say, I am the righteousness of God in Christ and the Lord is open to my prayers and the Lord's, and the Lord's eyes are watching over me. Watching over me. Hallelujah. Now, in Genesis 15, verse 6, it says, Abram was counted righteous because he believed in God. Our righteousness is not counted or reckoned. 
The Bible says we were made righteous. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, He, God, made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So I've been made righteous. Now, my righteousness, according to the Bible, is as filthy rags. You know, the scripture says, no, there's none righteous, not one. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But we're not talking about our righteousness. We're talking about his. I'm not righteous because of anything I've done. I am righteous for only one reason. For what Jesus did. When my dad died and he had already told me, he said, now son, when I uh, go to be with the Lord, I had led him to the Lord so I knew he was saved. And he said, uh, uh, the uh, family trust, he said, there'll be a cash disbursement out of it and to you and your sister. And he said, and the rest of it stays in the trust for you and your children's children. So he, he, he did a biblical thing even though he didn't have total revelation of it. And one day I was just worshiping the Lord and I was just thanking the Lord for what my father had done. He raised me, he provided for me, etc. And I, and, I, and I began to drift off into realizing my father was the greatest generation, went through the Great Depression, fought World War II, rebuilt America. I mean, he worked hard. He was a success, but he worked hard to, to accumulate wealth, things, property. And when he died, my sister and I inherited everything that he had willed to us. And I got to thinking, Lord, I didn't do one thing to deserve any of this. I didn't make it. I didn't build it. I didn't create it. I said, the only thing that I did to deserve what my father left me was I was born his son. That's it. And the Lord said, yeah. And that's all you had to do to inherit what I gave you is be born again, born into the family. So what we have in our righteousness is inherited as a gift from God. We didn't do one thing to deserve it, to earn it, to make it. So our righteousness, the reason we can stand in his presence without any guilt or shame is because we didn't do any of it. Jesus did it. Now, I want to take a little turn here. Go back to Philippians chapter 3. And I want to, I want to take a, a little turn, a little exit, and then we'll come back. Philippians chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. This is where the Apostle Paul begins dialogue. And verse... Eight. Well, let's go to verse 7, Philippians 3, 7. What things were gained to me, I counted loss for Christ. Now, he, he didn't... He didn't say that you have to lose everything. He said he counted everything loss. For Christ, yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. Now, the, over in uh, verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark for the prize. Be sure to watch next week's broadcast as we continue this message. I want to really encourage you even challenge you, don't lose the momentum. The righteous are taking back our nation. The righteous have spoken. We're in a righteous revolution. Be a part of it. You know, people call and ask for prayer all the time. A viewer called in and asked for prayer. He suffers from depression and his medications don't seem to help. So now he's asking God to heal him. If you can believe with me, I want you to pray with me for this brother. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this brother that requested prayer and others like him. We come against the spirit that's behind this depression and oppression. 
and command it to loose him. Let him go in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're destroying yokes and removing burdens and delivering him in Jesus' name. Amen. We're always here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report that you'd like to share with me, email it to me, happycaldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call our toll-free number 1-800-264-2525 and send us your prayer request. Right now, I want to encourage you to get our product offer. It's a teaching entitled Righteousness. And as I said, we're in a righteous revolution right now. But unfortunately, too many Christians don't know what righteousness is all about. They don't even know that they have been made the righteousness of God. So I want to encourage you to get this. I'll be right back in just a minute, but watch this. Righteousness, the ability to stand before God without guilt or shame. Did you know you are righteous? When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you were given the gift of righteousness. It's not something God requires you to earn. You can't lose it. You are made righteous through Jesus. Happy Caldwell teaches in depth on this very subject in his six CD series, Righteousness. For just $30, you can learn the depth of God's love, grace, and righteousness for you. Call 1-800-264-2525 to order your set today or log on to vtntv.com. I want to remind you again to get your copy of Righteousness. You know, you can't depend on politicians and government just because you've voted and the righteous have responded and you may or may not like the outcome. You cannot just sit down and stop. You have to keep the momentum going. And that's what this teaching will help you do. Join me on Twitter. If you like, follow me, happy underscore Caldwell. Be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch online. To watch this video on demand, log on to vtntv.com and click watch. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-800-264-2525. Ask for the offer number on the screen.